Good morning everyone. Today I am doing my first drawing and painting demonstration for you. The illustration is one of my little birdies which I, I love drawing. Um, here I'm using my Sakura 003 pen to just do the outlines of my illustration. Sometimes I stick to what I've done with pencil, but sometimes I um, tend to just make changes with my pen as I go. If I see something that I don't like, I might change it as I you know, do the outlines and just adjust where I think I need to adjust. Once I've finished drawing the outline with the pen, I'll be adding some shadows and then I'll be adding some color. While you watch me draw this little illustration, I thought I would talk a little bit about my art and how I approach my art and why I work the way I do. First thing I wanted to talk about is why I work on a very small scale. I um, I very rarely paint anything that is bigger than an A4 um, size. Thinking about it, I think it's because I'm a very shy and introverted person and um, my art reflects that. I've also found myself drawn to smaller art. Even when I visit galleries and museums, I find that they have this more intimate nature that you need to go close up and look at the piece as if they're calling to you um, to tell you some secret. So the way that I like to think of it when I work this small is that I am drawing whispers. My art isn't loud. It is something, it's like a little story that um, I'm just whispering to you. So I'm calling you close up to see it. And when you're there, you can see all the details and listen to the story through the colors and the line. Something else I'd like to talk about a little is why I work so slowly. So this piece took me all day to, to paint and um, I work this slowly because I ponder a lot. <laughs> I stop and look and try to listen to what the drawing is telling me. Um, it's it's a two-way journey when you're when you're drawing or painting you you kind of do your thing and then have to wait look at your your piece and see what it's saying to you and see where it's going and see what it needs from you so I do a lot of that I lot a lot of stopping and starting until um, I know just what what, what to do 
I like to be sure that um, when I place my pen, which I can't erase on the paper, it will be in the, its right place. So I, I do draw very, very slowly. Another reason that I another reason that I draw very slowly is because I have to. I physically have to draw slowly. Um, and the reason is that I have multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis last year. Um, the type of multiple sclerosis I have is secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, which means that I don't really have the, um, the breaks that the first stage of the disease has where I can you know, have good days and bad days. I've had to make many adjustments to my life because of the disease and one of them it has been to adjust the way I work. You may see me now painting on a table and um, that isn't really how I paint. For the purposes of creating videos, I use my little table and I did so for this video too. But in reality, I prefer to draw and paint sitting on an armchair with my legs on a leg rest so they don't hurt and having like a my laptop a tray on on my legs and on that laptop tray I have a little book stand and it's a little vertical book stand and on that I place my watercolor pad or my sketchbook and I draw and paint like that because it isn't as painful feel immensely grateful because I can still draw and paint. Um, it seems that the disease has affected mostly my left part of my body which means that with my right part of my body, my right hand um, uh, is working fine for the moment and um, I am so so grateful for that because it means I can continue doing what I absolutely love doing um, which is painting and writing. I love writing as well so painting and writing um, gives me so much joy and I'm very 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 grateful that I can still do this.
after the shock of the diagnosis had dissipated, well, kind of, because it doesn't really dissipate completely, but <laughs> after it dissipated a little, I made a bucket list. Um, I made a bucket list of things I wanted to do, not before I, you know, one passes away, but before I wouldn't be able to do them because um, the truth is I don't know if I will be able to continue doing this, doing my um, painting as I am doing it. In my bucket list were two things that kind of tied together. One was that I wanted to do a YouTube channel. I wanted to do a YouTube channel because I wanted to share the love that I feel for um, watercolours. I love watercolours so much and I wanted to share the joy that they give me and um, I wanted to spread that joy to to other people and share it with like-minded people like you. The other thing <laughs> that was on my bucket list was that I wanted to try as many watercolours as I possibly could, um, well, as I possibly could afford. And as you know, as I have pro mentioned, you may have heard in previous videos that I have basically stuck to two brands, to Windsor & Newton and to Daniel Smith. And I wanted to try other brands too and other colours from Windsor & Newton and Daniel Smith and just um, discover more shades and more colours that I haven't used. And what better way to do that than do it with friends, with friends that appreciate the beauty of colour, um, with other people who get the same excitement and the same goosebumps <laughs> uh, from discovering a new colour and I'm so 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 thankful for you to be on this journey with me. So in a way I am kind of grateful to my diagnosis because I don't know if I would ever had built up the courage to do this, to do this channel if it weren't for the push that um, and the, the wake up call, if you will, that the diagnosis gave me. I was a little reluctant in bringing up my um, my disease, but I felt that I needed to bring it up because at some points during the year, I will need to take breaks. Um, I will need to have like a week off here or there where I don't do videos because my body needs to rest. And also, um, next month, for example, it's either next month or the beginning of June. I'm not really sure on the date yet, but I will need to go back into hospital for treatment. So I'm going to be away again for a week. The treatment itself is just a day in the hospital, but I'm so wiped out 
by the end of it. I don't know if I'm coming or going. <laughs> I am, it's like I'm a little bit drunk and I have a hangover and I am being hit on the head all at the same time um, for a, a few days. So I'm kind of out of it. So um, it's best that I stay off camera for that period <laughs> of, of time. Before I stop my ramble and let you enjoy the rest of the video in peace well, with some hopefully nice music to, to listen to, um, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for giving me so much support and reaching out to me with your messages and your kind words, they mean the world to me. Um, I hope to be doing this, videoing and also painting for a long time. Um, we'll see, we'll see if that's possible. But for now, I'm just, I'm just grateful for the moment. I'm grateful for now, for doing what I love, being able to do what I love and that I have you with me on this journey. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.